Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure, both uh, professional and personal, to welcome Penny, to welcome Richard, to welcome the entire team uh, here for, uh, for Austin. Um, I think we don't need much proof, um, but here's more evidence of it, that the United States and Australia get along swimmingly. We've seen that in Paris. Uh, we see that again here today. Um, yeah. yeah. We don't. We don't. Oh. <laughs> Should be close to press. But, uh, <laughs> but we uh, no, we sw we swim together, and <laughs> and here we are. To uh, to both of you, to all to everyone here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming together for Ospin. Um, uh, we uh, are building on uh, Prime Minister Albanese's uh, visit um, in October of uh, last year. We're building on the last Austin we had where you were so graciously um, hosted us and we wanted to return, uh, more than return the favor. Uh, as the President said last October, uh, our alliance, the alliance between Australia and the United States, is an anchor to peace and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, and not just the Indo-Pacific, globally. Uh, deepening cooperation across the pillars of our alliance, security, economic, climate, clean energy, these have been the hallmarks of the work that we've done over the last few years. Uh, on security, we're working together to advance stability, uh, prosperity in the Indo-Pacific and beyond, and we stand together in addressing threats to peace and security. We've made extraordinary progress under AUKUS, uh, as well as bilaterally, toward having seamless defense cooperation and uh, innovation between our countries. And we deeply appreciate Australia's commitments as well at the NATO summit to Ukraine's defense. Uh, economically, Australia and the United States are simply essential partners. Uh, the United States is the largest foreign investor in Australia and the largest recipient of outbound FDI from Australia. This relationship is genuinely an innovation alliance, uh, as our leaders stated in October. Uh, we have the public and private sectors cooperating in emerging technology, from quantum to uh, AI, uh, we're working together to facilitate high-quality infrastructure uh, in Southeast Asia and the Pacific. And, of course, we co-hosted the first Pacific Banking Forum in July in the United States to ensure banking services in the Pacific. And finally, on climate and clean energy, we're partnering together for the clean energy transition. Our Critical Minerals Task Force is working to ensure sustainable, resilient, uh, secure critical minerals and clean energy, not just for us, but for the entire world. So in these and so many other areas, our countries are bound together, but this meeting, um, bringing together uh, our foreign policy and security uh, teams, is a foundational element of the relationship and all the work that we're doing together. We couldn't be more pleased to have you here. So welcome. We look forward to the work. Penny. Uh, thank you, Tony. Thank you, Lloyd. Uh, it is such a great pleasure for Richard and I and our teams to be here uh, with you. Uh, and I start by reflecting again uh, on uh, our relationship and the alliance, which is, is about who we are, it's about what we stand for, and it's also about what we want in the world. Uh, and if you look through the agenda we have, the, the work that we are doing together across the, the different lines of effort uh, in our partnership, it is wide and it is deep, uh, and it is uh, being renewed uh, over and again. Uh, obviously, I, I would say we, we also meet today in the, the shadow of the deteriorate, de deteriorating situation in the Middle East. I want to, we want to acknowledge your uh, leadership and your work uh, on that, uh, the extraordinary efforts, Tony, you, you, you've engaged in to uh, broker peace and, and to advance President Biden's ceasefire proposal. Um, uh, you know, it's, uh, ceasefire has been urgent for months. It's never been more urgent than it is now. Um, the, that is only one domain in which the United States and, and others, but particularly the US, is having to show leadership. Uh, um, obviously, the Ukraine too, uh, and uh, in the Indo-Pacific. In the Indo-Pacific, the, the security guarantee by the United, of the United States uh, has enabled the long period of prosperity and peace that you know, we have enjoyed, uh, and it has never been more vital. It's never been more vital. 
uh, we see this Osmin uh, as uh, another opportunity for us to uh, together work at how we rise to the challenges for today, uh, to ensure that our alliance, our partnership, our work together is fit for the times, delivers for our shared objectives and aspirations and for the region that we live in and we trade in. Um, you know, we, are, we are stronger together uh, and at a personal level can I say uh, how much we appreciate our personal friendships uh, and how much as an ally and friend we respect uh, and appreciate the work of the both of you and this administration in the prior priority you have given and continue to give to alliances and partnerships. Uh, it is, it is uh, 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 an extraordinary achievement uh, to date and ongoing. Thanks, uh, Penny. <clears throat> uh, Deputy Prime Minister Marles and Foreign Minister Wong, welcome to Annapolis. You can tell by looking at the faces of all these sailors in the room that they're <laughs> delighted to be here at, at what they believe is the center of the universe. So. <laughs> Uh, and welcome to the 34th uh, Australia-U.S. Ministerial Consultations. And it's great to be here with my, uh, my friend and colleague, Secretary Blinken. Uh, thanks to the United States Naval Academy for hosting us. You know, this is our third Osman together. And each time we've made historic strides and strengthened our alliance. And I'm confident that we'll continue to deliver today. We're poised to advance our advance major force posture initiatives. We'll take steps to deepen our defense industrial cooperation on co-development, co-production, and co-sustainment. And that includes supporting Australia's guided weapons and explosive ordnance enterprise. We'll also identify new opportunities with like-minded allies and partners, including Japan, India, and the Philippines. For more than a century, the United States and Australia have worked shoulder to shoulder. Australia remains an indispensable ally. We're working together uh, today uh, to tackle shared security challenges from coercive behavior by the PRC to Russia's war of choice against Ukraine, to the turmoil in the Middle East. And I know that this year's Osman will deliver results for both of our peoples. And so Richard and Penny, uh, thanks for making the trip and I look forward to some great discussions. Well, thank you, uh, Lloyd. Thank you, Tony. Um, it's great for Penny and I to be here. Great to be here at the Naval Academy. It's um, we have a new Chief of Defence Force since when we last uh, met you. Uh, Admiral Johnson is the the first uh, Admiral, first member of the Navy to be our Chief of Defence Force for quite some time. So, as we are experiencing a Navy takeover of our uh, <laughs> Defence Force, it feels particularly apt that we are here at, at Annapolis. Um, this is the 34th uh, Osmin. It's the third that the four of us have had the honour of being the custodians of. And as we meet today, when we think about the last couple of years in which we've been working so closely together, it really has been a period of intense activity but intense achievement. I mean, we now have a pathway forward in terms of Australia acquiring a nuclear-powered submarine capability from the United States and the United Kingdom under the banner of AUKUS, and we're making progress in terms of AUKUS Pillar 2 as well. Uh, if you look at the force posture of the United States on the Australian continent, we've seen a growth in the marine rotation in Darwin. We look forward in the coming years to the submarine rotational force in Perth. Uh, but in fact, the, the, that force posture laydown of the United States in Australia is across all the domains, uh, from US Army watercraft through to logistics at Bandiana. These are all decisions that we've taken in past Osmins, but we're actually implementing. Like, there's a real change. Um, and it is a significant contribution to integrated deterrence within our region, but it's a really significant contribution to the peace uh, of the Indo-Pacific. We're working more closely together uh, in our industrial bases. The legislation that went through the Congress last year, which was complemented by the legislation that went through our parliament in March of this year, has transformed the uh, seamless 
ecosystem between our two in defence industrial bases, which are now yielding real dividends in guarded weapons, for example. And we are seeing a blossoming of relationships within the Indo-Pacific, uh, trilaterals between ourselves and Japan, the work that you've been doing with Japan and Korea and what that has unlocked in terms of the ability for us to work with those countries as well. And all of that is giving rise to a much safer region. I really want to echo the point that Penny made. I mean, as a global power, you've got so much on your plate. We look to your leadership in the Middle East. We have very much look to your leadership in Ukraine. Uh, but we could not be happier with the extent of your presence in the Indo-Pacific. I mean, it's been wonderful, genuinely wonderful. And for that, we thank you. But it needs to be the case because we are living in a difficult and fraught world um, where you know, your alliances with, with the countries in the Indo-Pacific, like Korea and like Japan, but of course your alliance with us um, is completely central to our worldview, to our national security, but we really want to thank you for making those alliances the heart of the way in which you've been going about positioning America and the world. It really is uh, what differentiates the US from everyone else, um, and we are very much uh, pleased and proud to be a partner in that, and we look forward to the discussions today. Thank you, Press.